Have you heard of Adina Menzel? She's had so many iconic roles. Which one do you most associate with her? Frozen. Frozen. And Frozen. Even though I know she's more prolific for Wicked. Um, I would probably say Wicked and Rent. Alphaba. In Wicked, of course. She's in Wicked. She had to. Both. She's in both. She's in both? Yeah, she's in both. Oh. But in the second movie, she sings. But in the first movie, she wasn't singing. And they were like, oh, she can sing. She, she's a Broadway star, you didn't know she could sing? In the first Enchanted <laughs> movie, she wasn't singing. Um, she sings Let It Go, right? Yeah. yeah that's you where I'm that <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> I don't think my vocals are that good. Could you perhaps sing a line from Let It Go? Let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. It's Notes from America. I'm Kai Wright, and welcome to the show. Tony Award-winning actor and singer Adina Menzel has played a series of roles that inspire much more than fandom. She's embodied that familiar, youthful search for identity and for understanding your place in a world that just maybe isn't designed for you. And she's done that across generations at this point. As Maureen and Rent, she showed us how to be unapologetic about who we are and what we want. Take me, baby, or leave me. As Alphaba and Wicket, she created an anthem for rejecting the whole idea of normal. And of course, as Elsa in Disney's Frozen, she told us to just let it go. And she kind of created a new holiday standard with that one, though there's, of course, ample debate about whether it is or is not a holiday song. I'm not going to wade into that. Anyway, she now has a new documentary on Disney+. Plus. It's called Adina Menzel, Which Way to the Stage? And in the film, she invites us all into her journey from being a little girl with a love for performance to the moment she takes the stage for her dream gig, playing Madison Square Garden. So while the film is on the surface, a tour doc, it's also about her own search for identity and balance and joy. I spoke with her about the film just before it debuted. Adina Menzel, thank you so much for joining our show. How are you doing today? Good. Happy holidays. You describe Madison Square Garden as your dream venue in your hometown. So let's start with New York. Tell us what this city means to you. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Well, I should start with saying I grew up in Long Island. And it was an exciting excursion to go into New York City all the time Mm. to see theater. So it became this very exciting, glamorous place and also sort of the impetus for wanting to perform, you know, sitting in a in a theater and the lights go down and the orchestra starts playing um, overture and goosebumps I would get. And that was my first experience with New York City. And then. As I grew older and then I went to NYU, the city represented a place where you could be yourself. And it was less um, homogenous than where I grew up. And it was actually welcomed Mm. to be unique and different and not to feel like you had to fit in. And um, it was the home to artists. It is a home to artists and creativity. And it's a city where when you're feeling alone you don't feel lonely because you can go out and you walk it off and you can see other people um and have that energy and so it's sort of like a a sanctuary in that way it's so interesting so many of us who live in new york feel that way you know but it it tears you because on one half it can be a very isolating place. And then on the other half, because of the size and the scope. And on the other half, it's like, oh yeah, this is, and me and Adina Menzel might both be walking around trying to clear our heads right now. Um, it's magical exactly. in that way to me too. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, the documentary is as much about your family life um, and in particular motherhood as it is about your remarkable career. So I, I want to talk about that a little Um 
you've kind of got this blended family of your husband and your son's father, who is Tay Diggs, uh, and your son. So take care of my mom's big hair. <laughs> and you show, you know, the sweet moments. She looks beautiful without it. <laughs> but also the challenging moments of that. There's a scene where you realize it's going to be like some weeks before you see your son again and you're wrestling with this question of whether to fly him around. I miss my son and my husband and then I decided not to bring in Walker this weekend because he's got all these games and I won't have seen him for like two and a half weeks. So what kind of mother does that make me? And then, then I'm thinking, um, why am I- Can you tell us about that moment and why you're sharing that part of your life? Well, that's not just one moment. It's all the two <laughs> Um, it permeates that, that, that feeling is permeates the, my entire life. Um, it's the constant struggle and balancing of priorities and trying to stay present in my life and also be everywhere at the same time. Um, and I think that as an artist, it's important for us to be vulnerable and authentic in our lives because there's really no other way to connect with an audience if, if you're not willing to do that. And so um, I think that so much about art and, and acting, especially performing is um, empathy and the empathic experience and mm. being able to put yourselves in someone else's footsteps. So I just want people to, if they can, to see themselves in, in my experience and feel uh, accepted in that way and, and um, empowered in that way that, you know, we're all trying to live out our passions and our dreams and, and to understand that that's really difficult sometimes. And that there's, there's guilt and confusion with trying to do that and um, wanting to be a great parent while still pursuing our passions in the world. And um, the impetus originally for the the film was just to document a dream coming true, honestly. I wasn't even sure how it would come together, if it would come together. I just wanted to make sure I documented it because I really just want to appreciate the little successes along the way and and to not let them sort of get past me, you know, and, and that's really important to me. And then on that journey of documenting it, I started to realize it was less about a tour doc and just <laughs> hitting city and more about um, the the craziness, the spaghetti of the map that you see, as I like to say, and how we're reconciling all of that chaos and how we prioritize things and um, we're there for the people we love while also taking care of ourselves. Yeah. Has that, I mean, I, it, I can't help but think, both hearing you talk and watching the documentary about the conversation we've heard so much about in the last few years, in particular about motherhood and mothers, uh, uh, in the course of the pandemic in particular, having to figure out how to juggle career and childcare and uh, and how uniquely that has fallen on mothers uh, in our society I don't, I don't, and, and how it's made people think differently um, about their priorities. I wonder if it's, have you, have you had any shifts in that regard? You know, I'd like to say it's changed and that I'm easier on myself and let myself off the hook a little bit more and, you know, throw my hands up, surrendering to doing the best that we can. You know, I don't think I'm successful at doing that all the time. <laughs> and I think it's five steps forward, three steps back all the time. But um, but what I tell myself to make myself feel better is that um, is that I want my son to see mirrored for him um, a woman that is strong and passionate about what she does for a living and fulfilled by those things and understand that I can be there for him and love him unconditionally and also choose to do things that will make me happy. Mm. I think that that for him or that I want that to attract those kind of women in his life. And I don't just mean that like it, it could be a man, but yeah. just want him to surround himself with women like that in his life. Yeah. The, the other thing you share in this regard in the documentary is that, you know, alongside as you're pursuing this dream uh, of playing the garden, you're also uh, undergoing round after round of IVF, um, uh, which takes such a physical and emotional toll on anybody. 
Um, and I just wonder what it was like to, you know, to share that piece of it and why that also felt like an important part of your story to share in this. Yes. I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't set out to do that, um, but it was happening. I had started IVF for probably a year before that. And as um, some people might know from their own experiences, um, you have to catch a cycle. Your body has to be in the right place for things to be successful. So you get sort of obsessed with, is this the right month? Is this the time? And, and, and you're shooting yourself up with drugs and hormones and all this stuff. And so when the tour was coming about, you know, it was like, well, I can't not do this because what if this month is the month? That's right. the right time right. to make the baby, right. you know, um, or to get the most, the healthiest eggs or whatever it is, whatever part of the process you're in. So um, I thought, okay, I'm just going to let people into this, this world. I, you know, I had control over it. So I thought, let's film it. If it feels too, um, too intimate, I can always, you know, edit it out, but it didn't, it didn't feel that way. It felt, um, I think a lot of people go through this and um, it's important for people to feel like they're not alone in that. And um, it's also important for people to see, like you said, it's emotional, but it's also literally physical, the hormones and the way that you mm -hmm. feel. And so then um, for us as women to, to put our bodies through that and then try to show up to work and be whole human <laughs> beings is a challenge. I'm talking with Tony Award-winning singer and actor Adina Menzel about her new documentary, Adina Menzel, Which Way to the Stage. Coming up, we'll get to the music and to the gift that she says these roles have provided for her. And then a little later in the show, we want to hear from you about your holiday music traditions. We're going to open the phones and share our own anthems, be it for Hanukkah, Yalda, Kwanzaa, Christmas, New Year. I'm sure I'm missing other stuff. But whatever you celebrate this time of year, is there a song that you cannot live without? 844-745-TALK. That's 844-745-8255. And we'll have more of my conversation with Adina Menzel and then take your holiday song calls after a short break. Stay with us. Notes from America is supported by The Innocence Project, working to free innocent people from prison, prevent wrongful convictions, and create fair, compassionate, and equitable systems of justice for everyone. More at innocenceproject.org. Notes from America. I'm Kai Wright, and I'm talking with actor and singer Adina Menzel about her new documentary, Adina Menzel, Which Way to the Stage. 
The film is in many ways a memoir of her career, but its purpose, the reason she says she wanted to make it, was simply to document the moment she achieved her dream, playing Madison Square Garden. The, the whole thing is about you pursuing, as you said, this this dream of of playing the garden. Was it the dream you thought it would be when you when you got up on that stage? Yes, it was. Um, when I finally was up there and the spotlight hit me, it was. I was able to sort of be in my body and take it in. And I hope you can sort of feel that from the film. Um, I really made it a point for myself to to try to slow things down every once in a while and and appreciate the moment. I think a lot of that um, setting that precedent comes from my experience with rent early in my early twenties mm. and um, having experienced um, being in this new show and our composer passing away on his first preview. She's, of course, talking about the horrible story of Jonathan Larson, the creator and composer of Rent. The show was his passion, his life's work in many ways. And on the night before it finally debuted off-Broadway, he had an aneurysm and died. Um, it's sort of, it dictates how I wanted to move through my life and my professional career and understand that life is fleeting and doing the work and, and being a voice and a, a vehicle for someone else's work um, is an honor and it's a privilege. And, and also how, you know, the success ebbs and flows and you go through all of this rejection and it's not all just one sort of <laughs> ascendance to, to success. There are a lot of um, failures along the way. And so it's just important to kind of just appreciate it. Yeah. You've played these roles that have become so definitive in the cultural imagination for so many people. And in making them, for instance, as you began to embody Elsa, did, did, was it clear to you that, oh, this is a this is a big thing. This is going to, there's going to be a before and after in our culture with this character. Um, the only thing that was clear to me was that it was really cool to, get hired to play, to voice a Disney princess. And, you know, that was a huge coup to me um, to be sort of welcomed into the Disney family. I had no idea <laughs> that it would become the phenomenon that it has and that I would be given the gift of such incredible music. And that it would speak to people thematically the way it does and profoundly the way it does. So um, that, yes, that was a, a beautiful surprise. I also, what I really try to take pride in is that I've had several of these kind of roles. I'm, I'm not sure why it's chicken or the egg or just coincidence, but um, this idea that I've grown up with my audience um, is really important to me and something I don't take for granted, you know, having mm. in and rent and then grown up with those people and now uh, those kids were having kids and they take them to Wicked or yeah. to Frozen. And so this idea that it's all kind of come full circle and I can have this audience that consists of little kids in blue dresses and also, you know, um, 60 year old gay men and moms. <laughs> and so, um, that is quite an honor for me and something I just, uh, I'm very, very proud of that. Uh, I mean, certainly I, you know, rent was, I'm in the generation for whom rent, you know, and its depiction of queerness on stage and its wrestling with the AIDS epidemic, um, was just foundational. It was such a foundational piece of work, you know. 525,600 minutes. 525,000 moments so deep. And, um, and then to however many years later, take my partner's uh, niece to see Wicked. Um, and see how she exploded uh, at that experience to see herself. Um, it, I hadn't thought of it that way, to be honest. I hadn't thought of the generational passing on that was happening there, but it is very much yeah. true. Yeah. Thank you. What did Ritman mean to you at the time? 
when when you when you similarly was did it feel like oh this is never be a no very you never show. know at the time yeah you never know at the time because these three projects especially but many others that I've been a uh, part of um, they especially in in the musical world um, with musical theater they take years to develop and evolve and you go through all these incarnations of the script and so you really are asked to stay process oriented you know mm. you really are. Um, in the first act of a script, then that's it. And a bunch of you go in a workshop and you learn that and you have a couple songs and then, then six months later, you come back and they've worked on that and they've added or subtracted and written a new song or just cut an old song. And um, it's a process that I've loved and that I've had the most success with, you know? And so it's just, it's my happy place, you know, to, to not necessarily know how it's going to do, but know that I'm surrounding myself with amazing creative people and a cast of incredible artists and just sort of creating together and hoping it's going to do really well years later, but, you know, not having that much power over that. So um, that's a lesson that I, I've learned that I, I cherish. Yeah. What, what do you hope folks will walk away from this documentary with? Uh, it, you know, it's, 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 it's through this tour, we cover the sweep of your life <laughs> um, and your career. What, what, do, what do you want us to walk away with from um, what I want you to walk away from or what did I learn from the experience? <laughs> oh, maybe um, it's both. Thank you. I, actually, can I do both? Can, well, we ask, can we ask you both? What, first, sure, first, what did you learn from it? it? It's kind of the meta of the dream within the dream, right? So like I started out to, to document a, a dream come true. And then by doing it, um, once we documented it and we caught, caught everything on film, then we, in order to make the movie, we went back and we found archival footage and the really relish and enjoy the um, idea that I was this little fearless girl that believed that she had something to offer the world. Tomorrow, I love you tomorrow. Even more so than probably I am at, at age 51, because there's more to lose when you're older and it's more successful. Mm. And so um, just to really, it was really moving for me to see like, you know, there were a lot of people that said, don't go into that business. It's so hard and blah, 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 and ma minor in business. And <laughs> um, and I, I believed in myself. And I, you know, when I was holding that limbo stick at a bar mitzvah, I was like, I'm going to get out of here soon and I'm going to move on to other things, you know? So no disrespect to those people that are holding limbo sticks at uh, <laughs> weddings, bar mitzvahs. But um, so that's the part of it that was just so... Um, moving for me and, and really rewarding. And what I hope people will take from the film is that, um, that your dreams can come true. That if you, if you pursue this idea of doing what you love and pursue your passions, that that will lead you to beautiful things. And that we all are juggling many things in our lives. We're all trying to prioritize. We're trying to be the best um, parents, spouses, uh, friends that we could be while also, um, wanting to have a fulfilling job and, and do what we love to do. And that is complicated sometimes. And, mm. you know, there's a lot of feelings and sometimes guilt and worry and anxiety that goes along with that. Um, so I wanted people to see themselves, their experience in mind. And it doesn't have to be because I'm a singer in front of thousands of people. It's literally just the idea that we're all working hard, trying to have a fulfilling life. And we get torn in a million directions and have to kind of keep finding our way back to our north, you know. Dina Menzel, Which Way to the Stage is streaming now on Disney+. Plus. Thank you so much for Thank this you for time me. and for your work. Um, and for what you've done for all of us. Thank you so much. So honored to be on the show. Thank you. Okay, three, two. Feliz Navidad. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. How lovely are your branches? And then I don't know anymore. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There's <laughs> just one thing I need. And I don't All I want for Christmas is you. 
What? <laughs> You're listening to Notes from America. I'm Kai Wright, and it is that time. Holiday music is here. And now listen, y'all, I am definitely one of those people. So if you are annoyed by overly eager holiday season types, you probably want to avoid me this time of year. I can do without the consumerism of it all, of course, but sign me up for the glitter and the gluttony and the sentiment. And I do prefer my holidays universal. So if you are celebrating it, whatever it is, I am in. Count me in. Anyway, one of my favorite parts is the music. I dig out old records, yes, but I also enjoy a good holiday stream, like 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Tune in, fill your home with cheesy, saccharine, and fun music. So if you have a holiday music recommendation for me, I would like to hear it right now. Let's live curate a Notes from America holiday playlist. Call us up with your suggestions, and we're going to add them to a Spotify list that we'll make available starting tomorrow. And I also, of course, I want to hear the why of your choice. Is there a story or a memory behind whatever song you love? 844-745-TALK. That's 844-745-8255. Or drop it in the chat on YouTube if you're watching there. Or you can hit us up on social with at Notes with Kai. Whatever you celebrate this time of year, do you have a favorite song associated with that? Doesn't even have to be an explicit holiday song, but if it's your jam this season, recommend it to me and we'll put it on our playlist. 844-745-TALK. That's 844-745-8255. And as we take your calls, I'm joined by someone who knows something about a holiday music stream. Lindsay Kimball is the program director for Minnesota Public Radio's renowned music station, The Current. And what I love about The Current is, despite the fact that it's hip, it is not too hip for a holiday stream. Lindsay Kimball, thanks for joining us for this experiment in live playlist curation. Yeah, thanks for having me. You know, we like we like our holiday music, and, and we have our hip take on holiday music here at The Current. <laughs> okay, well, tell me about that, actually, because so I should point out for folks, uh, Lindsay is, has brought the holiday sweater energy to this interview, so thank you for that. Um, I failed to bring my Santa hat, but uh, uh, check back next week. Okay, so tell us about this uh, this stream. Like you said, it's you, you know you like to mix it up. What tell us what's going on on, on on the current holiday stream? Yeah, so there's so much great holiday music from modern artists. Obviously, there's like a canon of holiday music from artists like Bing Crosby and Andy Williams and 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 like what you would consider standards. But there's a lot of great independent artists that are making great music. That's holiday music. And so we kind of dig through and try to find that and then sprinkle that in with with some of the standards as well and then put it together every year for our holiday stream. So if you need to get your fill of, of uh, you know, the standards, but maybe you want to spice it up a little bit with with something you maybe haven't heard of or a different take <laughs> on a song, that that's what the stream is for. And we have it at our website, thecurrent.org, and we also have it on our app. So you can bring it with you wherever you go. You can bring your cheer right. to the office, on your commute, wherever. So it's a great way to... To, you know, celebrate the holidays. What what makes a good holiday playlist to your mind? Like, so as you guys are putting that together, what is it? What and, and maybe a different way to ask that is like, what is um, what is it that this music is doing for us? You want to have something that you can sing along to, but maybe something that surprises you. So maybe a different take on a traditional song, or something from an artist that you really love, but it's got the holiday holiday twist on it, and it's it's not just like the uh maybe the traditional holiday songs it could be like a, f a funny song so maybe uh sufian stevens who has a song called get behind me santa <laughs> is a fun way to like think about the holidays a different way is that like a like a reference to the like get get behind me satan uh-huh yeah <laughs> okay yeah he's just he's bringing a sense of humor to his holiday music his he has this five ep holiday uh collection that he put out that's called songs for christmas and he's got like Christian religious like uh, uh, standards on it, but he also has his own like sense of humor on it. So he has this, um, "Hey guys, it's Christmas time" is a song we like to play quite a bit. But he's got he's just got beautiful take on holiday music. So it's kind of fun to like throw those in there, and and it, you know you get surprises in there, and that's and that's how we kind of put together our our holiday music. MM on YouTube loves your sweater. Says Santa baby, love Madonna singing it. Reminds me of high school. Phones are blowing up. No surprise. Uh, let's go to Alex here in Brooklyn. Alex, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? What's your, what's your so recommendation, Alex? Crabs for Christmas. 
Crabs for Christmas by uh, David Du Bois. I don't know it. Sing it. Sing a beat or two of it for me, will you? <laughs> Uh, oh, I want crabs for Christmas. <laughs> Only crabs will do. Oh, and with crabs for Christmas, my Christmas wish will come true. <laughs> yes, thank you <laughs> very much. Alex, we're going to have fun tonight here. Uh, Lindsay, do you know that song? I do not know that song, but I tell you that what that reminded me of instantly is the Pogues Fairy tale New York. And my favorite part is how that song starts off with uh, singing about Christmas in the drunk take. So just sort of like a more jovial view of Christmas, you know. <laughs> Christmas in the drunk take? Uh, yeah. And, and okay, can you sing a bit of that? Uh, it, and, you know, and Sorry I to heard, put you on the spot. Yeah, let me think. Uh, it's Christmas in the drunk tank. And that's how it like starts out. And then it goes into this. More, more slightly vulgar version of, oh. of a Christmas song. Not, you know, not too bad, but just it's it's not the uh, sugar spice and everything nice. I but understand. it's it's still a it's a nice modern standard. So that so we will not play that on public radio, but you can find it on the current stream. I suspect uh, we did ask people in our show's Instagram community um, for their favorite holiday song last week. Uh, and so, you know, if you are not with us um, in uh, on Instagram, I encourage you to go there. Our handle is Notes with Kai. That's Notes with K A I. Um, and we got a ton of answers there. Um, and anyway, we got some like just like great voice notes. And I'm gonna start our cure, our playation. I mean, I guess I already started with Alex, but I'm gonna gonna f- to keep our curation going with what was my favorite one from our Instagram community. I love all your answers, but this one, this one right here, this was my favorite. So check this out. Hi, Kai. My name is Pia, and my family and I listen to a Charlie Brown uh, Christmas by Vince Guaraldi Trio in December. It is the best thing in the world. And it is the one my mom and dad listened to when I was born. I love it. And it's so great to listen to. I hope you enjoy it. So much Pia for that, and I will admit Pia is a bit of a ringer. I know young Pia; she's a total delight. And yes, you may have noticed we are going hard on the cute kids thing because we love cute kids, and because we want you to join the fun. We know how to get your attention. So, whatever you celebrate this time of year, call us up and tell us about it. Eight four four seven four five talk. We'll take your calls after a break. holiday season, a lot of different holidays correspond with this time of year. Is there a particular holiday song 
that brings back memories or a tradition for you? Yeah, last Christmas, because when I was in elementary school, and I'm from Norway, and so my English was just, I don't know, but I, I just thought it meant the last Christmas, like the final Christmas ever. So it made me really sad. It made me feel like it was a very layered song. That's funny. Can you sing it for me? Last Christmas, I gave you more. But the very next day, you gave it away. Beautiful. Thank you. Actually, yeah, you know the one that goes, is beginning to look a lot like Christmas. That one is in my head, like, in this season, like the whole time. I'm Dominican, but that's like the, the English song that we feel that it sounds like Christmas, you know? Probably like chestnuts roasting by an open fire. Like, it's not just good in December. It's great anytime, like feeling like you're waking up to warmth and like the just fullness of your family. So I'm gonna put both of you on the spot. Can you sing your song for me? It's roasting. On you did not let me get ready. Can you start over, please? <laughs> Okay, chestnuts roasting on an open fire, Jack Frost nipping at your nose. It's Notes from America. I'm Kai Wright, and yes, we are singing the holidays tonight. I'm joined by Lindsay Kimball, Program Director for Minnesota Public Radio's music station, The Current, where they have an eclectic holiday music stream going right now. We've got a couple of holiday streams going here at New York Public Radio as well, and I'm sure many of our station partners out there have their own too, so I hope you'll check them all out, maybe later tonight with some eggnog. But first, I hope you will join me in live curating, curating a Notes from America playlist. 844-745-TALK. That's 844-745-8255 with your holiday song recommendation. And of course, if you've got a story or a memory attached to that song, let me know. Uh, and let's go to Michael in St. Paul, Minnesota. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you. What's your recommendation, Michael? My recommendation is the Christmas Can Can by Straight No Chaser, an acapella group out of Indiana. Oh, my uh, home state, Indiana. Okay. Thank you for that. I, do you want the opportunity to sing it or you don't want to be put on the spot? I'm not sure anybody wants to hear me sing this, <laughs> but I'll take a whack at it. So Go for it. Give it's, us my, a... it's my four and a half year old son's favorite Christmas song, so I think I have to now. Give us a note or two. Um, Christmas, Christmas time is here in sight. It's sleigh bells. Oh, wow. That went sideways on it. Let's just pretend that never happened on live radio. <laughs> that was great, Michael. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Olivia in Bayside, Queens. Olivia, welcome to the show. Oh, oh you've got to turn your radio off, show. Olivia. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. What's your recommendation? Um, I, well, I selfishly have two. I'm a jazz nerd, and Nat King Cole is my jazz dad. So, you know, Christmas okay. song, Nat King Cole is a classic. And then I'm part Italian, and the Italian side of my family, we all get a good laugh out of Dominic, the Italian Christmas donkey. The Dominic the Italian Christmas no I don't know this. I don't know that one. You don't know that one? Help me out. Help oh, me man. out, Olivia. Okay. All right. So the the main course basically goes a jing a de ding a ding hee ha. It's Italian Christmas donkey. A jing a de ding hee ha hee ha. It's Dominic the donkey. Yes. And then it goes into a whole hilarious uh rhyming thing about Dominic helping Santa and there's even paisans being thrown into uh, one of the lines, and it's very funny. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I'm going to throw out some from YouTube so that we uh, can fill out our playlist, too. We got, uh, the, obviously, This Christmas from Donny Hathaway from R. Jennings. You got, how can we not have that on the list? Um, though, you know, Layla Hathaway has been tweeting recently about, hey, TV people, it's time to book me to sing that song, too. I, I'm with you, Layla. Uh, we have PJ Morton Christmas album is excellent. We have um, Erica Tolberg says... Uh, some favorite holiday songs, Baby, Please Come Home, which Darlene used to, Darlene Live used to sing uh, on Letterman every every year, and Adam Sandler's Hanukkah song. Uh, so we've got, we've got a long list going here. Uh, I want to ask you, um, Lindsay, so I got into a conversation over Thanksgiving um, with, a, with a musician friend of mine uh, about Mariah Carey's, you know, um, the, the mega holiday song. The um, hit. The yeah. hit. Um, and you know, we were of course in the sing along portion of our of our evening. Yes, that's the kind of, of holiday I have. And we started asking, has there been a new massive holiday hit like that since Mariah's? You know, and I know there's been lots of music, but like 
such a big commercial and cultural hit. I, I couldn't think of one. Has there been no, one since then? No, there's that song is almost thirty years old. It was recorded in August of 1994. In fact, Mariah Carey was like, she's like, I got to get in the spirit before I record this Christmas record, which also was an aberration because a lot of people were making Christmas records after, like when they're at the end of their career and they just needed to to, to gas it a little bit. Like a this cash her, grab kind of thing. Yeah, this was her fourth studio album and it was kind of like, oh, she's breaking the mold here. So it's summer, 1994. She decorates her whole house in Christmas just to get in the festive spirit and then records this record. And whatever she did worked because this song... <laughs> has raked in almost, I think, uh, what I saw, the figure I saw was $60 million in licensing. Oof. I know. <laughs> Does that all go to Mariah Carey? Is this, this explains a lot. But that song is everywhere. The minute yeah. it's like Christmas, it's like, it's on every station. It's on It's on a bunch of movies. It's all over the place. Yeah. So, man, she, she really penned a hit. $60 million in licensing. Okay, Mariah. So I have to chime in, chime in with my own new favorite. I have many songs I love, uh, obviously. But the newest for me uh, debuted in 2020. And it was David Diggs's Puppy for Hanukkah, which I loved it. I loved it. And uh, can we play a few beats of that? Uh, our live board engineer, Milton Ruiz, is over here. Uh, what do you think? Can we hear some of that? So y'all keep stressing. Be good. Learn lessons. But Hanukkah is the best fun. And you can laugh if you want to. But I'm going to get a puppy for Hanukkah. I'm going to get a puppy for Hanukkah. I mean, there's the David Diggs of it all, of course, you know, but like this was 20, this was December 2020, you know, and I think we all kind of need, I mean, this was a dark year and I think we all kind of needed a puppy for Hanukkah that year. Um, yeah, I'm going to get what I want, Hanukkah. That just cracks me up. But, you know, it's been a long, I mean, Adam Sandler had the Hanukkah song that he did on SNL and it's it's been a minute since we've had a truly hilarious Hanukkah song. I, and I, that one might might show up. Adam Sandler, just a bit. I Well, I'm going to put my hand on the till to say it does, in fact, show up Anderson, Adam Sandler just a little bit, but that's me. Uh, let's go to Christine in Chicago. Christine, welcome to the show. Thank you. What is your recommendation, Christine? My recommendation is Brenda Lee's I'm Going to Lasso Santa Claus. And please don't ask me to sing it. <laughs> Listen to Brenda Lee. She's much better. <laughs> okay. I will not ask you to say it. Now, why, but I will ask you why that song. What, what is it you love about it? So it was the dreaded 2020 quarantine, and I'm an essential worker, and they let us into Palm Springs for a family vacation. And we went to uh, some deserted outdoor mall, and they were playing this song. And my daughter went to school in Dallas, and I just – I fell in love with the whole kitschy Brenda Lee. I'm going to lasso Santa Claus. Aww, aww. Well, thank you for that, Christine. Let's go to Ramona in Rolling, New Hampshire. Ramona, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, yeah, my song has got a history to it in a way. <laughs> okay. My great grandmother. It was called Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Grandma got I run over, over by a reindeer. reindeer. <laughs> yeah, <I agree. laughs> years, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was this true but, for you? No, she. Well, my great grandmother, she was in northern Maine, and uh, you know she was out in the middle of nowhere, and a deer came after her once and almost ran her over. So. <laughs> Well, I'm glad she survived. I mean, it. really, it was like, what? You know, I mean, she was out there giving the reindeer a hard time and get out of the yard. You know, she was feeding her animals, and he came right after her, and he almost knocked her down. So when that song would come on, my grandmother would go, that's not true, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Thank you for that, Ramona. I would go, great, Grammy, it's okay. And she goes, I keep looking for that damn deer coming in my backyard. Thank you so much for that story, Ramona. I needed to hear that. Uh, let's go to Tristan, Tristan, I'm sorry, in Chicago. Tristan, welcome to the show. Hey, uh, thanks for having me on. And um, I have two songs that I really, really enjoy along the holidays. The first one is I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas, which is, of course, a classic. Yeah. Um, and uh, around the house, though, 
we really like grapefruit soda. So it is a, I want a hippo, hippo pomplamoos for, for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, the, the, the classic is um, Bare Naked for the Holidays by Bare Naked Ladies. Bare the naked. entire album is really good. There's a couple of good Hanukkah songs in there, too. But their rendition of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen is jazzy and upbeat and fun. And uh, that's one that everybody really likes, no matter what generation is listening to it. Thank you for and that. And didn't they Just do that with Sarah McLaughlin on that track? Th- that, that particular track, yeah. She jumps yeah. in and does the refrains and does a couple of key changes with her. So, um, yeah, um, I could do a couple of bars if you like. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> Yeah. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. And they they go on and on like that. Come on, Tristan, bring it. Yes, yes. Thank you so much (laughs) for that. Okay, I, so I want to share a couple uh, more of the voice notes that we got from our Insta- Instagram community this week, because um, these are good. This is the, f- the first one is about a holiday album in its entirety, so kind of like Tristan with the Bare Naked Ladies there. Um, and this is certainly foundational in my community, like among Black families, this is probably still the holiday soundtrack. Cue in this up. Hi, this is Nina from Montclair, New Jersey. When I think about Christmas music, there is nothing more Christmas, more holiday than the Jackson 5 Christmas album. It speaks to the holidays, my childhood. I probably have not listened to the entire album in decades, but I bet you $5 if that album dropped right now. I could pick up and sing every single lyric of every single song and probably do some of the Jackson 5 dance moves too. It makes me happy. It makes me joyful. Jackson 5 Christmas album. That is the epitome of holiday music. Okay, so that's one we got on Instagram that I know, and here's one that was new to me. My name is Jay. I'm from Albany, New York, and my favorite holiday tune is Ocho Candelicas by the Joss Nelson Project. It's a Sephardic tune. And uh, as a music video where a bunch of weird animated candles are hanging out in New York City for some reason, and I can just turn it on on repeat on YouTube and stick my kids in front of it and I don't have to talk to them for days, days, the entire holiday season. They will just watch this thing and it is lovely. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so Jay's getting a little free child care there out of holiday music and I'm not mad at you, Jay. Uh, let's go to Dina in Manhattan here in New York. Hey, Dina, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. And happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah holidays. Tomeya. Next Sunday night, Hanukkah first night. That's right. So, yeah, so there's a, uh, the boys, um, town Jerusalem are often boys. And every year they have a wonderful little video of Rock of Ages, Matsor, Rock of Ages, da, da, da. They do a great rendition of it. And I was trying when I was waiting to trying to get, try to like connect it to play it for you, but I couldn't get my act together, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. We much prefer <laughs> but, the bit um, that, you, that you sang for us, Dina. Oh, thank you so much. But it's really, check it out. It's a um, Boys Town Jerusalem. They're often boys and they do a great job. Thank you very much. Let's go to Johanna in Mankito, Minnesota. Johanna, welcome to the show. Hi, happy holidays. Happy holidays. What's your recommendation? So I know around the holidays, sometimes it can be a little bit depresso or sad sometimes. Um, And I lost my mom a couple of years ago. Mm. And whenever I hear the Carpenters, 
Merry Christmas, darling. It reminds me that she's still here with me, and I love that song. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. I have kind of the same relationship to The Temptations whole holiday album. Uh, a lot of my relationship to holiday music was, is of course, my family, but you know, my dad loved that album. He loved to get up and dance badly and sing off key. <laughs> um, uh, and so every time I listen to that album, I, um, I think of him. So that's lovely. Lindsay, what about you? We haven't gotten your actual recommendation. We've gotten your expertise here, but like, what, what, what would you put on the list? Yeah, you know, my favorite stuff, I love the Sufjan Stevens box set that I already talked about. Um, but Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings put together a holiday disc. So if you want more of a soulful vibe mm -hmm. to your Christmas, um, she's got a great album. And then um, J.D. McPherson, who's an Americana artist, has an album called Socks. And I saw him tweet at the beginning of November. He said, it's officially past Halloween. We can start playing socks again. So <laughs> he's he's like, okay, it's okay to play this one. So he's got a great one. And then Lizzo put together a song that's that's called Never Felt Like Christmas. And she's got, you know, her cool take on Christmas music. So there's just a big pile of amazing music out there that artists make. Like just listening to everyone's recommendations. There's so much that I'm discovering just hearing what everyone else looks to listen to. How do you guys put the list together? I know I asked you earlier, you know, what um, what you're listening for, but like literally how do you compile the playlist? But yeah, we spend a lot of time digging for music and listening to it. And then um, artists that we play regularly on air on The Current, when they put out something, we check it out and, and usually end up adding that to the to the playlist and we keep what has become a really big library of holiday music hanging out. And so we, we keep adding, you know, more and more to it every year and it keeps getting bigger. And, and so, uh, it's just, it's become a, a pretty great resource to find great holiday music. And it's going 24 seven, uh, through, through when? It'll be up through the end of the month. Um, and then, uh, and it's available, on, like I said, it's on our app, which is the Currents radio app. It's also at thecurrent.org. It's uh, old chestnuts to new favorites. It's songs you will love. It's songs that slay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, we will have to leave it there with that fabulous pun. Uh, Lindsay Kimball is program director for Minnesota Public Radio's music station, The Current, as well as Friday host on the station. Uh, so tune in to hear her spin tunes and check out The Current's holiday stream at thecurrent.org. Lindsay, thanks. Yeah, thank you. And thanks to everyone who called to help us live curate a Notes from America playlist. We'll compile the list and put it up on Spotify, uh, I guess, later this week. Um, no, it'll be available tomorrow. Um, there'll be a link in the show notes for this episode. And you can find that at notesfromamerica.org or wherever you get your podcast. You can also keep chiming into the list. Hit us up on Instagram at Notes with Kai, that's K-A-I, or go to notesfromamerica.org and look for, there's a little record button and you can leave us a voice note right there. Notes from America is a production of WNYC Studios. Milton Ruiz was our live engineer tonight. Music and mixing by the mighty Jared Paul. We are produced, edited, and reported by Karen Frillman, Vanessa Handy, Regina Dehir, Rahima Nasa, Kusha Navadar, and Lindsay Foster-Thomas. And I'm Kai Wright. Thanks for hanging out tonight. Happy holidays. <laughs>